And for a few minutes, turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2. This is on page 1272 in the Old Schofield Bible. 1272, 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, verse number 3. Verse number 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin, underline, man of sin, be revealed the son of perdition, underline, or remember, son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, I want to talk about the man of sin a little bit this morning. In this series that we started a couple of weeks ago, we started out with the subject perilous times. Perilous times shall come. And then we talked about, I will establish David's kingdom. And we saw how God promised that. And then, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel the disciples asked Jesus after spending 40 days together with him there. And then the church age, age was divided into seven periods. The apostolic, the martyred church, the state church, the papal, the reformation, the missionary, and then the apostate church, which is the last one, last period. And that's where we are today. In the, uh, ap uh, the apostate church is on earth right now. And there are so many people that are apostate that still go to church. And then we talked last Sunday about the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is coming. Now I want to talk about the man of sin. We all will agree that the greatest character in the Bible is Jesus Christ himself. All scriptures from Reve uh, Genesis to Revelation teach about Jesus Christ. The New Testament gives us much knowledge about the, this particular and wonderful personality and that He is our Savior and the only Savior. Even though we have never seen Him with the natural vision, we love Him dearly. We are praising Him today because we love Him dearly. This love that we have for Jesus is not some put on foolishness. I'm glad I'm not acting a fool. The world thinks I'm acting a fool. They think I'm foolish for saying hallelujah. They don't know what I got. I mean, if the world knew what I had, they'd be joining in with me. Brother, I tell you to be out there in sin, living like the devil wanted you to live, going straight to hell, and all of a sudden a Savior reaches down and swoops you up, saves your soul, gives you eternal life, puts the Holy Ghost inside, and then say, you can't appreciate that? Man, I'm getting close to home. I'm 75 years old today. I'm getting to be an old, old man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give God glory for that. Amen. I'll tell you, I know I've not got much more uh, life on this earth. Most of my life has already been spent. That's a fact. And I'm going to leave here one day, but thank God everything's all right. Everything's all right, not because I'm so good, but because He is. Because I have a Savior that can save and keep, hallelujah, and, and, and promises will be fulfilled. Jesus Christ, the righteous, the holy, the perfect, no one else can we say that about, not anybody. While we love and extol this great Savior, we are made to realize another character in the Bible in the New Testament that is very, the very opposite of Jesus Christ. He is the Antichrist or the man of sin that is coming to this world shortly. Now Jesus Christ means the anointed of God. Christ is the God-man. We studied a little bit about that in Sunday school this morning. He's the Holy One. Without any spot or without any blemish at all, Jesus came and went to the cross to pay our sin debt. And of course, Antichrist means instead of or against. In this context, it is against Jesus Christ that we're talking about. That man of sin will come to be against Jesus Christ. Antichrist will resist and defy Jesus Christ. He will not consider the written word as valid. Not even when the word speaks of himself will he count valid. So he will be against all forms of religion and worship. These religions that say they're going to occupy the world and everybody's going to do what they say. I got news for you. Antichrist is going to set them on their heels. 
Amen. They're not going to get by because he's going to destroy every religion except himself. And that's the Word of God. We are going to learn this. And next Sunday, I'm going to name him. I'm going to give you who he is for sure next Sunday. Now, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped. I don't care what kind of worship it is. If it has God in it, he's getting rid of it. When he comes into power, in especially the last half of the tribulation period, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, we know that he is the man of sin, and the Bible calls him that. So that's what I'm going to call him, the man of sin. Uh, he will establish his own throne. And instead of uh, recognizing that Jesus Christ is God in man, he's going to recognize that man is God. What do you think all this humanism that's been taught down through these years since I was a young person on up till this very day? Humanism says that man is God, and God is nothing more than just a man. Brother, those false doctrines are going to fall apart pretty soon. All of them are going to burn in hell. They're not going to go to heaven, I'll tell you that right now. So if you're a humanist, you better change your tune, because you'll wish to God you had one day. And if you believe in all this stupid, uh, stupid stuff like evolution and foolish stuff. Hey, I've, I've asked a few that believe that in years gone by. Prove to me. Just give me one proof that we came from a monkey. Except looking at you. That's the only proof I got. <laughs> yeah. Brother, but they can't find one shred of proof to show me that we came from evolution. But I got proof I came from God. Hallelujah. I'm glorified, saved by the grace of God. I'd save my soul when I called upon Jesus Christ. This is real. And so, my friend, he will rid this world of every semblance of Jesus Christ and the true God. Even though he desires the world concerning uh, Christ to just absolutely let all of that go, he aims to sit upon, he wants them to forget Christ, but he wants to sit upon the throne of Christ. Isn't that something? That's the way hypocrites are. That's the way the devil is. That's the way demons are. This man of sin will be revealed to the world in 2 Thessalonians 2 8 and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming this man of sin shall appear as the world's savior oh we're looking for a savior right now the entire world is looking for a utopia the world is looking for an answer, somebody that will come on the scene and give them the answer. We're uh, getting all the politicians stirred up right now, Republicans, and they got one old Democrat out there, Hillary. I guess she'll be theirs. Amen. I'm not a Democrat nor a Republican, buddy. I'll tell you right now, if I were a full-fledged Democrat and they'd run her, I'd just turn the other way. I, I'm going to lose my tax exemption. I am. I got a big mouth. I got a big mouth. I say too much. But whenever it's analyzed, when it comes down to nitty gritty, you're going to find out this preacher wasn't lying. Brother, I'll tell you, people that can't believe in God, the God, the true and living God, we got Bible scriptures all over every building in Washington, D.C. We got in God we trust on our money. They pray in Congress every morning. And yet you can't pray in a public school. That's reprobate. That's being a reprobate. Brother, pray anyhow. Praise God. You don't have to have them give you permission to pray. You can talk to God anywhere, anytime. So just pray anyhow. Worship God. Love God. Let them stew in their own grease. That's what I say. So this man of sin shall appear to the world as their Savior and offer them everything they want. He promises his deluded followers full enjoyment in this present world, not in a world to come, not in a heaven, so-called heaven. Oh, just forget all about heaven. I got everything you need right here is what the Antichrist is going to convince this world of. So he will mar the truths about heaven and convince this world that their future happiness is not in heaven, but under his leadership, under the leadership of the man of sin. He will convince a lost world that he is the center of its hopes. 
and the satisfier of all of its needs, and the healer of all of its hurts. We noticed in a previous study that the angels were the first creations of God, Job 38, and among these angels was the supreme angel Lucifer. Lucifer, Ezekiel 28, 14, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Now we're talking about God putting Lucifer on this earth and giving him a wonderful, wonderful kingdom. And everything was so bright and so wonderful. He had a perfect environment. All he had to do was lead his subordinates in worship to God. That's all he had to do. Praise God. Not one pain of suffering, not any sickness, not any darkness. Everything was bright. Everything was light. And that was Lucifer. And Lucifer had these subordinate angels whom he led to worship and praise God until he began to lust for God's power and lust for God's kingdom and to lust for his kingdom to be exalted above God's kingdom. Lucifer's kingdom was garnished with precious stones and filled with angelic beings who followed him. It was the most beautiful place. His beauty itself was absolutely astonishing. This angel was really set for an, in, uh, an eternity of bliss and glory. Everything was just right for him. Anybody would give everything they have to have a position like Lucifer had. Now, but he was not satisfied. Iniquity was found in him. God's power, God's glory was greater than his. Well, if I'd have been him, I wouldn't have cared. I'd have said, glory to God, I'll praise God for all eternity as long as I got all this. Praise the Lord. I've got it made. But see, a lot of things happen when sin enters in. It, death follows sin. Whether it be in that particular era or after man was created. Now, sin entered into his heart when he declared his purpose to exalt his throne above God's throne. God's throne is in the third heaven. Satan had a kingdom down here somewhere between the third heaven and this earth. And, he, and this earth was in particular his domain. Now in Isaiah 14, 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? He tries to go up and get God's place, but he's cast down. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart. Now notice the five eye wheels now. Satan, Lucifer had eye trouble. He said, I will ascend into heaven. I mean, I know I got it made. I know I'm a prince. I know I'm beautiful. I know I'm just gorgeous. But I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to go to God's heaven. I'm going to go where he is. He said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. He was saying in his heart, I'm going to be the most exalted personality in all the universe, greater than God himself. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. I'll be just like God. When I get through, you're going to look at somebody that's like God, equal with God. Now, those, of course, over whom Lucifer ruled, uh, followed him in the sin. And God sent judgment upon the earth and Lucifer's kingdom. Lucifer became the devil. In Genesis 1-2, the earth was without form or became without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, Satan and his demons have continued to this very day to regain dominion over this earth. Now, we know from Scripture that demons seek a physical body in which to dwell. When Jesus cast the demons out of the man of Gadara, they asked permission to go into the herd of swine, and Jesus gave them leave. They went into the herd of swine, the swine ran down the hill, into the water and drowned. And of course, this implies that at one time, they had physical bodies. 
Satan and his demons have increased in their hatred toward God, and they are determined to dethrone God. They're still determined to dethrone God. I'm glad I got news for you. The Bible tells us it'll never happen. So, Slewfoot, if you're sitting here, you probably are, or you know, some of your demons are. I got news for you. You're headed for hell fire. Yes, sir. You're not going to conquer this thing, but he's so stupid and so determined that he's going to continue because he thinks something will break somewhere down the line. He'll find a weakness in God or something. Now, this is so uh, Satan himself can be worshipped. He's always desired to be worshipped. He's doing it today. Look at the demon worshipers that we have in our world today. In Ephesians 6, 12, you want to know why you have so many troubles? You know, with the flesh, the world, and the devil? Let me tell you. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You bring any man up here, there are probably a lot of men up here could stomp me, but you bring any one of you up here to do it, I can fight back. It'll be flesh and blood against flesh and blood. I may win. I may win a few. I may do like rowdy rousey. Stand, I may get stood on my head, but boy, I tell you, she put the quietus on her, didn't she? Yes, sir. So, the thing about it is, I'm not wrestling against flesh and blood. You're not wrestling against flesh and blood. It's more powerful than that. We've got to have something more than our flesh to conquer this. And that is the whole armor of God. Amen. That is, we have to have the whole armor of God and able to withstand the wiles of the devil. After a while, after a while, now you know the world was in such a mess, it was dark. After Satan fell, after Lucifer fell, and God said, uh, let there be light. And there was light. God restored light to this earth. Satan, Lucifer brought darkness, but God said, I want light back. God loves light. People that are saved love light. Men love darkness because of their evil deeds. They don't want to be reproved. So God said, let there be light, and there was light again on the earth. The very thing that had been darkened by the uh, fall of, of Lucifer is now lit up again. And then, then God said, I'm going to do something else. I want to make a man. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. God breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. God put that man on this earth and said, now take care of it, look after it, have dominion over it. And did you know man could tell the devil to go sit out there in the snow? I mean, man had power over the devil, over the devil. Because God made man to have dominion over this entire world. But then here comes Satan with a trick. Comes into the Garden of Eden in the form of a serpent. And begins to tempt Eve. And caused her to question God. And finally she yielded. And then she gave to Adam. And he sinned. And they died spiritually. They died. They lost it all. There Adam had the deed to this earth and handed it back to the devil. The devil had it. God took it away from him, made a man to rule the earth, and man gave it back to the devil. And that's why you and I are in the mess we're in right now. Man failed. Man failed. Man couldn't do it, or he could have but didn't do it. And now we've got Lucifer out there, the devil, trying to do everything he can to conquer this earth for himself. He wants this earth for himself. He wants everybody to worship. He wants you to forget about heaven and all the rest of it in hell and just look to me. So after a while, Satan comes to man and tempts him and tempts him to do wrong, and he does. Satan then becomes the God, with a little g, of this present world. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, the God of this world has their minds blinded that they cannot See, they cannot come to the light of the glorious gospel. The light, the light, the light of the glorious gospel. There's light in Jesus, darkness in Satan. And Satan wants to keep everybody blinded. Blind people walk in darkness. They cannot see. All right. He wants to keep them that way. Where they'll never see the light of the cross. The light of the blessed Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. But praise God, the Holy Spirit is still here in this earth working to call out people like you and me 
and we've seen the light. Hey, hallelujah. And we're not in darkness as they are. We are not in the night, but in the day. We're children of the day. And we can see. And brother, we're headed for a place of light that we have never seen before. He lighteth it up himself. He's the glory. He's the light. There'll need no need of the sun or the moon. In heaven, brother, Jesus lights it all. Glory to God. So Satan can do what he wants to. All these people that are following the devil, they're drinking. And listen, I'm not against sports or anything. I love it. Our little old boys just absolutely played ball yesterday. I'm proud of them. And if they win next week, I'm going to have them get up here. And I'm going to just brag on them. I love sports and all that. And there's a way you can do it and still serve God. But I'm going to tell you, a lot of people have taken sports and made a God out of it. And I tell you, Budweiser, Budweiser, Budweiser. That's good for, what does it say? Budweiser's good for everything or whatever they say. It's good for nothing. Good for nothing. But see, people are just drinking and having a party all over the world, having themselves a time and fighting one another. If you don't agree with me, I'll kill you. If you don't agree with my religion, I'll just cut your head off. If you don't agree with my religion, I'll set you on fire. I'll, I'll set you on fire and burn you alive. That's hell. That's the devil. That's, God, that's the devil's uh, religion. That's not God's. Boy, I tell you right now, I'm glad that you and I know better than that. And I'm going to tell you something, good old America. America, listen. Uh, listen, isn't there enough good old American spirit in you and me that we're ready to fight that crowd if they come over here? I, I, you say, Brother Sam, I, I don't know where to listen to you or not. You sound like a hate monger. You sound like a warrior or something like that. Well, if they come after me, friend, I may die, but some of them going with me. I'm going to go up. They're going to go down. I'm not going to play around. Don't come around me looking like a raghead because I'm going to blow your brains out. Hey. I'm telling you, I'm so sick and tired of America and our president letting that bunch bluff us and bull, uh, buffalo us and push us around and all that. I'm so sick. I'm so sick of Washington, D.C. that I say they don't have the answer. But you and I, praise God, we're American people and we're not giving up our country. We're not giving up our country for none of them, for any of them. We're going to fight for our country by the grace of God. Amen. Good old America. Hadn't gone straight to hell yet. I mean, we're headed that way, majority, but they haven't gone yet. And we need to take a stand, be prepared. I say prepare, everybody. If you don't read between the lines, that's your fault. All peoples of this world, except born-again believers now, born-again Christians are serving the devil. Everybody in the world, except born-again believers, are serving the devil. The devil is controlling them. He's got them blinded. That's the reason you can't get a lot of converts now, because the devil's got their minds blinded. And we've got to witness and preach and tell people about Jesus, but we've got so many other things to look after, too. Takes time. Takes time to do these things. Many and most are not aware of the grip that Satan has on them because man lost his deed to this earth. Man lost it. Matter of fact, he handed it to Satan and said, you take it. And Satan took it. Now he's got it. And Satan's going to run this thing as far as the evil world. The world, the evil world, he's going to run it until he is put out of commission. And Jesus will do that when he comes to take the Antichrist and throw him into the lake of fire. So the populace today has many so-called gods with a little g, but Satan will finally destroy all other gods, so to speak, uh, and command his man of sin to be set up in the temple. Uh, yes, and to be worshipped as the God and the only God. The only true God is me, myself and I, the Antichrist will say. Now, and uh, the man of sin will soon be revealed to this world. In 2 Thessalonians 2.10, why is the world going to accept the Antichrist? How could so many people be so duped? The Bible says, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. 
they're going to receive Antichrist because they won't receive this. Now, if you're lost today and you're going to hell, you better receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. You better accept Christ into your heart as your Savior, or you're not going to be in that number when the saints go shouting in. You've got to be born again, Jesus said, born again. And that's not a physical birth, but a spiritual birth, and it takes place by faith. Faith in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. When you trust Jesus as Savior, you're in. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil's out. The man of sin is going to be a terrible tyrant. He's going to come in, and we'll notice next week he comes in riding on a white horse in a peaceful situation. First three and a half years of the tribulation appear to be peaceful, prosperous, and all that. But in the middle of the tribulations when he breaks his contract with Israel, and then all hell breaks loose on this earth. It'll be a terrible, terrible time, the last part of the tribulation period, and then Jesus comes back. Amen. He'll come back to this earth again. Amen. Let's stand and bow our heads. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray that if there are those here or those by streaming that are not saved, I pray, Lord God, that you'll help them to come to Christ before it's too late. Help everybody here right now to realize that being born again must be really real. It can't be just a mental acceptance of it. It has to be from the heart. One must believe and receive Jesus as Savior. And then, Lord, they can be born again by faith and go on and serve the Lord, and one day we'll be in heaven together. Bless, we pray, Father, this church and this people in Jesus' name we pray, amen.